okay uh, let me show you the contents of uh, this uh, video first uh, first I will start with uh, what is pseudo coloring then I will explain what is the need of it then I uh, will talk about uh, the first method to achieve the pseudo coloring that is known as the intensity slicing then I will talk about the second method that is known as the color transformation to achieve this and in the last I will explain the MATLAB code uh, that will implement uh, these two methods intensity slicing and the color transformation so now let me go ahead so let's see what is the pseudo coloring actually it is a process of converting your grayscale image into the color image so this is the process of assigning actually the colors to the gray values of uh, grayscale image based on some specified criterion so what is the need of it actually uh, actually uh, the principal use of pseudo coloring is to make the grayscale image better for the human visualization and the interpretation because uh, it is the fact that humans can discern thousands of color shapes and intensities as compared to less than two dozen shades of gray so the pseudo coloring is the process of converting grayscale image into the color image but these colors are pseudo color that means the false color so coloring is not done on the basis of the object right so now let's see the first method that is known as the intensity slicing so the intensity slicing is actually a very simplest uh, method to assign the colors to the grayscale images so in this scheme actually uh, a group of intensities of the input image i mean the grayscale image we assign a particular color of our choice so this scheme is shown in this figure so here you can see that on x axis uh, we have taken all the uh, gray values of the input image i mean from 0 to 255 so this is for 8 bit grayscale image because we have total 256 intensities so they are uh, taken on the x axis on the y axis we have taken the different colors which we will assign so what we have done we have divided the input intensities into the few slices like the first one second one third and fourth so here we have uh, divided the input intensities into the group so first group is from 0 to l1 and we are assigning the color 1 to these intensities similarly from l1 to l2 we are assigning the color 2 and from l2 to l3 we are assigning the third color and from l3 to 255 we are assigning the fourth color so this is how i have represented my uh, the input grayscale image into the color image which has only the following four colors right so this uh, suggested scheme actually is suitable when number of selected colors are less as we have just seen in the previous slide i have assigned only the four colors so but the problem is uh, that uh, by assigning the less number of colors in the output image you will observe the abrupt changes in the color so one such example is shown below uh, where the input grayscale image is represented using the five different colors so this is my grayscale image of moon and here i will assign following five colors so uh, the input intensities i mean from 0 to 255 uh, i have uh, divided into five groups so from uh, 0 to l1 i am assigning the black color and from l1 to l2 i am assigning this uh, brown color from l2 to l3 green l3 to l4 yellow and l4 to l5 i am assigning the cyan color so when i assign these color i get this type of output so although it looks better but uh, if you see uh, these uh, portions then you can see that there is an abrupt change in the color i mean uh, from uh, brown to green and yellow green blue yellow like that so uh, this is actually the main drawback when we assign the less number of colors 
So this scheme can be extended to assign 256 different colors to 256 gray labels of the input image. So instead of assigning four or five colors or eight colors, let's say, now I'm assigning 256 different colors to 256 gray labels. So obviously this will create a smooth transitions of the colors in the image as shown below. So here you can see the assignment. So from zero to 255, all the gray labels are assigned the corresponding colors. So here on Y axis, you can see total 256 colors in the smooth transition I have taken from blue to red. So here you can see that uh, uh, L1 color is assigned to C1, L2 assigned to C2, L3 assigned to C3 like that. So total 256 uh, gray shades are assigned to corresponding 256 colors. So that creates the smooth uh, transition in the colors. So as you can see in this output image. So obviously it looks better. So you can compare these uh, two outputs. So here the first image I achieved using the five colors assignment and here I'm using uh, 256 color assignment. So you can see the shades uh, transition of the colors that is smooth in this uh, second image. So it looks definitely better. So uh, now uh, the 256 colors which I have just used in the previous uh, example in a smooth variations are known as color map. So uh, MATLAB has actually the various inbuilt color maps. So there is no need to uh, create those color matrices. So you can just recall them with the name jet, HSV, copper, pink, etc. So many colors. So here a few I have shown uh, in this uh, image. So we have uh, by the name Parula, Turbo, HSV, Hot, Cool, Spring, Summer, Autumn, Winter, Gray, Bone, Copper, Pink and Chat. So you can use any of these inbuilt color maps uh, to assign your grayscale image. Uh, also, you have the uh, facility to change uh, these color maps. I mean, you can change the color map also and uh, you can create your own color map. So with help of the color map editor. So the color map editor can be used to modify the existing color maps or we can create the custom color map also. So when you call this color map editor in the MATLAB, this type of window uh, is open. So here you can see that color map is loaded in, the, in this strip. So that is of type jet from blue to red. And uh, uh, here you can see the corresponding RGB and HSV values. All right, so you can change this uh, uh, color map. So here you can see that these uh, tabs. So these tabs are actually defining the colors, right? So when you double click uh, any of this uh, tab, uh, the color picker will open and from there you can choose any of uh, any color of your choice. So you can change the uh, these uh, predefined color maps also. And from this tool tab, you can uh, uh, load any of the inbuilt color map and that will be applied to your corresponding grayscale image in the MATLAB. So this I will show you in the uh, code section when I will run this in MATLAB. So uh, this is how you can apply the color map editor. So you can just read any of your grayscale image, uh, then display the image and then call color map editor. So uh, from that color map editor, you can choose any color map from this tool tab that will be loaded at simultaneously, it will also be applied to the grayscale image. And then from uh, selecting different colors on these tabs, you can change the color map. Now let's go for the second method of uh, getting the pseudo coloring that is known as the color transformation. So color transformation uh, is uh, actually based on uh, the technique which is more general and thus it is very capable of achieving the wider range of color enhancement as compared to the previous method. So the idea underlying this approach is to uh, perform actually the three independent transformations on the grayscale image. 
And these three outcomes of uh, these three transformations are clapped together to create the color image. So this is, uh, this is scheme is shown in this figure. So here you can see that your grayscale image fxy goes to the transformation function. So you have three transformation functions, one for red, second for green and third for blue. So the red transformation function create uh, the grayscale image uh, which carries all the red information. So you can consider it to be as the R plane of RGB image. The second one uh, that is the outcome of this green transformation function. So this is the green plane of your color image and the last transformation function creates the blue uh, channel. So by concatenating these RGB matrices, you will get your color image GXY. So let's see what exactly uh, these uh, uh, transformation functions are. So the red, green and blue channels transformation functions are shown in this figure. So this is the red transformation function, this is green and this is blue transformation function. So obviously you can see it is a rectified sine wave. I mean uh, mathematically you will uh, see it is mod sine x. You can take any other functions also, it is just an example. So different color, uh, different sorry, different transformation functions will create different uh, style of colors. So on x axis, I have taken the total 256 uh, gray labels starting from 0 to 255. And uh, because of the sine wave, obviously these values are from 0 to 1, I mean their magnitude. So question is uh, how to convert a particular gray value into the corresponding color values. So just take one example of uh, a gray value of 50. So let's say uh, you have the gray label 50. So from 50, you just draw this vertical line as uh, you can see in this figure. So this vertical line cuts uh, these transformation functions on these points. So on these intersection points, you just find the values of this transformation function. So here you can see that red is uh, 0.9, green is 0.4, I mean these intersection points, and blue is 0.98. So from these uh, corresponding RGB values, the gray shade of 50 is converted into this RGB triplet, 0 0.9, 0 0.4, 0 0.98, right? You can represent this into the unsigned integer rate also just by multiplying 255. And uh, this RGB color is uh, like this, some lavender color. So this is a very simple scheme again. So all intensity labels, I mean gray labels of input images can be converted to the corresponding RGB triplet by just drawing this vertical line. So these vertical lines definitely will cut these RGB transformation functions at certain place. Okay, so uh, let's say for this corresponding RGB value, you can uh, draw the vertical line. So it will cut on these RGB values. So it means uh, any gray shade can be converted into the corresponding RGB triplet. So this is uh, actually the outcome of uh, this scheme color transformation method. So this grayscale image is converted into this following color image, right? So some uh, transformation functions are taken for this. So that we will see how we can achieve those uh, rectified sine waves uh, as color transformation function. So that I will show you during the uh, code section. So now come to the MATLAB codes. So first uh, I'm explaining uh, this file intensity slicing first method that is the intensity slicing method where we are using only the few colors right so with these uh, lines of code i am reading my image with help of the ui get file so the input image goes to img that is a grayscale image then getting the size of the image rows and columns and then uh, we initialize the r matrix g matrix and blue matrix right so later I can concatenate uh, these RGB uh, matrices to 
get my uh, corresponding pseudo color image then uh, I'm getting the input from the user that uh, how many slices you want so that will go into the NOS number of slices uh, for example if you want to give the five colors you will enter five four colors you will enter four like that then uh, all uh, colors will be given by the users also so those color information will go to the color matrix uh, color variable and uh, the interval uh, you also uh, have to define so that will also be given by the user intervals means intensity uh, interval uh, I mean the range of slices from L1 to L2, L2 to L3 like that. So that information will go into the interval variable. So now uh, inside this for loop from 1 to NOS, I mean number of slices, each time uh, it will ask uh, user to enter the intensity label and then uh, to select the corresponding uh, color. So a color picker will be uh, displayed with help of this UI set color. So with just a mouse click, you can select any color of your choice, right? And uh, here when user uh, completes all the inputs, I mean uh, all color information and the interval information, then uh, in this code, I am converting the all the gray values of input image to their corresponding RGB values. So here I'm uh, extracting the corresponding slice from the interval and then uh, from this slice i am uh, getting the lower limit and upper limit of the intensities so for example let's say l1 to l2 that is a one group of intensities that will be assigned some color so l1 is actually ll and l2 is actually the ul lower and upper limits and then i am extracting the rgb triplet uh, from the color variable uh, the this RGB triplet is the value which is uh, selected by the user from the UI set color and here I am separating the red green and blue component so now with these four loops I mean I am picking uh, all the gray values of the image and then comparing this uh, selected gray scale with the, the lower limits and the upper limits and uh, putting this condition that if uh, selected intensity is lying in this range i mean from l1 to l2 then uh, you assign the corresponding red green and blue color which is given by the user and uh, after finishing this uh, loop all the intensity values are converted into the colors and then concatenating all rgb planes to get the color image and then displaying the output right now let's see the second method uh, this is also the intensity slicing, but here in, in place of uh, selecting few colors, I'm selecting 256 colors for 256 gray labels. So that is giving me the a smooth shading of the color. I mean, a smooth variations of the color. So again, I'm reading the image and getting the size, initializing RGB matrices, and then taking uh, uh, color map name uh, from the user okay so if user enters let's say jet so the color map selected will be the jet if user enters HSV then corresponding color map will be HSV so I will call the inbuilt color map from the user and uh, color map generally is in the range 0 to 1 so I'm convert converting that into the unsigned integer rate values and then converting the selected color map uh, exactly equal to the 256 size because I have to map 256 gray label to the 256 colors. Then inside these two for loops again I am extracting all the gray values of the input image and then assigning the corresponding RGB colors right. Uh, after finishing it I am concatenating all the RGB planes to get the color image IMGC and then displaying the output. And now let's say uh, take the last program uh, which is used for the color transformation method. So this is the file called trans.m. So again reading my grayscale image, getting size 
and then initializing the RGB matrices. And uh, here I am defining my color uh, transformation functions. So in the previous slide, you have seen the, the color transformation functions like this. So let's say this is for red. So uh, I'm taking uh, the range 0 to 4 pi. 4 pi uh, means uh, uh, total uh, 4 uh, such curves you will get because uh, it is 0 to pi, 2 pi, 3 pi and 4 pi. So from here 0 to 4 pi I am taking total 256 points. Okay, then uh, this is my red transformation function. So it is simply the sign of uh, these values. So I get uh, sign of these values. I mean just two cycles. And then taking absolute. Absolute will convert all negative values into the positive values. So I'm getting the rectified output, right? So only these uh, upper part negative are converted into the positives and this is the green transformation function so it is also the same absolute i mean mod of it and uh, of all the sign values and then uh, minus pi by 2 that means uh, it is uh, given the phase shift right phase shift phase shift uh, actually to achieve different colors uh, so we do not uh, put all these uh, rgbs uh, uh, with the same uh, phase if you do it uh, you will get the gray shade because there will be no change in the rgb values so the shifting phase shift is necessary so if this r is uh, starting from zero so let's say green is starting from here right and then let's say blue is starting from here so that's why when you draw some line you select some gray level that's why you get the different values of rgb so some phase shift is required so to create different different colors you can change these phases later during the execution then with these two for loops i am reading all the uh, intensities of the input image and then corresponding uh, then assi i'm assigning the corresponding rgb values right and at the end, uh, again, uh, concatenating all those uh, uh, RGB planes to get your color image and then displaying the images. So now this code part is complete. And uh, now let me show you the execution of these programs one by one. So let me jump to the MATLAB. Uh, where is my MATLAB? Yes, this one. So here, uh, editor is open and this is the first program so this is my first program uh, where I am assigning only the few colors so that is a method of uh, intensity slicing so now let me run this program so it asked me to choose my grayscale image so I'm choosing the moon let's say so when I choose the moon it uh, says that enter the number of slices I mean how many colors you want to select so uh, I enter five I will assign five colors enter now it asks me uh, to give the lower and upper values of uh, the first slice so I'm assigning uh, 0 to uh, 50 so that is first interval I mean the first group of intensities and now select the color for uh, that first group so let's say it is uh, black, okay. Then enter the second intensity group, uh, 51 to uh, 100. Okay, and then uh, select color, let's say uh, brown, this brown. Then third intensity group, uh, 101 to 150 then select the color and let's say it is green okay and then uh, fourth intensity group that is 151 to let's say 200 
200 then select the color and uh, this is uh, yellow and the last intensity group so that is 201 to 255 so 255 is the last 255 and let's say it is red so when I select I get this output so this is uh, my pseudo color image of that grayscale moon so let me open that moon also in the grayscale so you can see this is uh, your grayscale image and this is your corresponding color image obviously color image looks better no doubt uh, but uh, because i have assigned only the five different colors so i can observe the uh, sudden change of the colors i mean uh, green and brown right and uh, now i can take one more example uh, just run this code again uh, here i will take one uh, word map okay and then assigning the color so uh, still uh, i will take five slices and the first slide i will take uh, 0 to 20 uh, 0 to 20 I will take uh, blue color then second interval I will take uh, uh, 21 to 50 21 to 50 and this color is let's say orange and the third interval is uh, from 51 to uh, 100 51 to 100 and this color is green uh, and uh, then 101 101 to 165 and here i will choose yellow and in the last uh, 166 to 255 that is the last group and let me choose the white uh, and this is the output so very beautiful output i get let me show you the grayscale image also so this is actually the grayscale image right and uh, the corresponding color version is this so it looks definitely better and i have just uh, given the five colors right and uh, now let me go to the second method uh, where uh, i i am using the 256 different colors uh, to achieve the smooth transitions between the colors i mean uh, smooth colors so this program is already there so let me run it and uh, I can select the image so I'm selecting moon again uh, moon or let me select different uh, peppers so now it is asking me to choose the color map so I have already shown you that we have different uh, color maps so many color maps inbuilt uh, in MATLAB so here I'm using the hot color map and see what happens okay so this is the output so my input grayscale image is converted into this so i can display both just for comparison so let me write the command montage uh, sorry the input grayscale image is img and output color image is imgc so you can have the side by side comparison so this grayscale image is converted into this color image using the uh, hot color map, right? Just take one more example. Running this uh, program and uh, let's say, uh, let me select this fruit image. Okay, and uh, giving the jet color map jet right so this is the output so let me display side by side 
this one. So here you can see this is the grayscale image and this is a corresponding color image. See, uh, you can understand that uh, why this is known as a false color coloring, I mean the pseudo coloring because objects are not uh, colored according to their natural uh, look or natural color. We are assigning some colors to them. Okay. So like uh, these grapes must be actually green, but here I'm getting the yellow because some color scheme is given to that. That's why it is known as a false coloring or pseudo coloring. And uh, I can take one more image. Let's say this circuit and uh, color map I can take let's say copper okay so this is the the grayscale image is converted into the corresponding color image I can show side by side this one obviously color image look better and uh, now let me uh, show you uh, how I can uh, use that uh, color map editor right so color map editor I have shown you how you can use uh, this one so this is the command color map editor right so this uh, I will use so before that uh, let me display uh, my image so I can uh, use lena image so let's say where is lena this one lena dot jpg so i will read this image first so let's say f equal to i am read lena dot bmp right sorry uh, bmp uh, is not there it is jpg actually jpg so this is my grayscale image f this one and now i will uh, apply some color map to it using color map editor so uh, just uh, display it i am show minimize it and then uh, type color map editor right so color map editor is opened enlarge it so since uh, right now the color uh, sorry my image is grayscale so you can see this uh, uh, all the gray values here as color map so but from tools i can select any of these uh, available color maps like autumn bone color cube cool copper like that so let me select uh, this uh, jet color so this jet is loaded and uh, here apply button is, is there so simply press it apply and uh, see what happened to your image okay so your image is converted into the color image right but uh, as i said you can change your uh, this uh, default color map so for example in place of blue you want black color so you just uh, double click this tag uh, i mean this tag so this uh, color picker is uh, open so from here you can choose black so this becomes black so now let's see what happens to image okay some black shade is there and now the second tag let me make it black again so more black here and let's see okay so now you can see more black shades are available here and uh, if you do not want uh, this red color uh, let me make it white or this yellow okay so let's see what is my image okay so that uh, red shade is gone so instead of this tag let it remain red uh, this I can make uh, yellow so this is my final image so by this way uh, you can change your any inbuilt color map or you can create your own color map right 
So now let's uh, go to the third method that is a color transformation method. So in the color transformation method as I have uh, shown you that uh, we will use the three transformation functions for color transformation. So now I am running this program and uh, let's see uh, what are the phase shifts I have used here. So for uh, red, I have used plus pi by 2. I mean that uh, uh, rectified sine wave is shifted by 90 degree. And green is shifted by minus pi by 3. And blue is shifted by plus pi by 3. So uh, they have given the different phase shift. So that you can, have, you can achieve the different RGB values for the corresponding gray value. So now let me run it. So for this plus pi by 2, minus pi by 3, and uh, plus pi by 2, I run this uh, program and uh, now I will select one image. Uh, okay, let, let me select these pollen. And uh, okay, so I get this type of image. So let me keep them side by side with help of the montage command. Okay. So you can see that uh, this image is converted into this color image. Now uh, let me change the phase shift. So now for red transformation instead of pi by 2, I am giving the pi shift plus pi and here minus pi by 3 and here plus pi by 3. So this will create a different color scheme. So running it and uh, selecting this uh, image, open. Okay, so this is my output image. Uh, here two kidneys you can observe. So let me show you the comparison with help of montage. So this is the gray image and this is the corresponding pseudo color image. Right? So you can see all the nerves and kidney sections very clearly. And uh, running uh, once again and here I am giving no shift to the red zero and then plus pi by 3 and minus pi by 3. Running it and then uh, selecting let's say fruits. Open. Okay, so I get this type of output image. So let's have the side by side comparison. So you can see this output. So this uh, method is also giving the smooth uh, transitions of colors like right? uh, like the uh, previous method of intensity slicing where we have selected the different color maps so this is all about uh, these uh, pseudo coloring schemes uh, where we have where we have gone through the uh, intensity slicing method uh, for few colors intensity slicing methods for 256 colors and then this second method that is known as the color transformation method. So here, uh, here I think uh, you have enjoyed this uh, session and you have learned uh, something new. I hope you have enjoyed and you have liked this video. So thank you very much for giving me your precious time. I request you to uh, like this video and share this video to maximum people so they can also get the advantage. Thank you very much. Have a nice time.